Roger. Vehicle's clear to stern. Roger. Argus over his head, going down. Roger. Let me know when it's ready. This is an audio slate for dive 1901. UTC time is 0458 mark. Testing, testing.
Oh, I wasn't. Now I am. And it's definitely. Can you hear me? Yeah. All stop, five zero meters. You guys ready for control? Control van's ready. All right, go ahead and bump it. You got it, next one up, pump. Roger, thank you. Testing, testing. Trevor, can you hear me? Do I sound echoey still? Okay, cool. Hello and welcome to dive number five of the, is it number five? I'm right, right? Yeah, number five of the Lu'ua Ai Hiki Keikuo Kai Expedition. Um, we are currently descending down to Seamount B, unnamed Seamount B, or just south of the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. So we're about 150-ish miles west of Kauai. We are planning to descend to a depth of approximately 3,731 meters and then work up one of the flanks of Seamount B. Do, do I sound echoey still? You are good. You Hi, Trevor. It. My name's Erin. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I think I fixed it. You fixed it.
Dive leader Megan's back in action. Are we ready for introductions? We are totally ready. All right, this is your dive lead, Megan Putz, from the University of Hawaii. We are currently diving on Seamount B in this unnamed Seamount chain, south of the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, which makes up the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. We are approximately 200 miles away from Honolulu and uh, diving this great seamount today. So welcome to the Blue Water Watch. Uh, let's introduce us, uh, the rest of us in the back row. Hi, my name is Coralie Rodriguez and I'm the Muffin Man. <laughs> what? Just kidding, I'm a student from the <laughs> University of Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> She has a final tomorrow, guys. Don't be too hard on her. <laughs> she has to take the final at sea, which, you know, mad props for that. Yeah, it's the worst thing ever. Sorry, Coralie. This is Abrian Carrington. I'm your science communication fellow for this watch. And on land, I am a professional illustrator and cartographer. And in our front row, we have our fantastic ROV team. I'll start it off. My name is Erin Rainey. I am the video engineer on the 4 to 8 watch. Hand it over to other Erin. I'm Erin Heffron, a uh, navigator on the 4 to 8 watch. <laughs> You're not on SBL, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Trevor Herc. Antonella Argus. So thanks for joining us uh, this wonderful evening for another great descent. Feel free to um, submit your questions in the chat. We are happy to try to answer any questions regarding our dive uh, ROV operations as best we can. Yep, that's nautiluslive.org. That chat is available for questions, so just pop one in there and we will try our best to answer it live on the stream. We got little squids, We're gonna go squid fishing. Via teleprompter, of course. Or uh, tele Telestrator. Tele Telestrator. Hey, challenge for the back row. Can you figure out how to put the banjos on screen? The banjos? Uh, the banjos. Oh, yeah. There's there's a... <gasps> what? We have extra settings. <laughs> now, if I am if I remember right, I don't think those self-clear. So. <gasps> oh, I can draw things around the banjo? Yeah, which Kay. will self-clear, I believe. So it's like a fish. I just, I just forgot that I hadn't... The telestrator's not streaming, and I don't feel so bad about that right now. <laughs> the fish playing a banjo. I love this. Oh, oh we goodness. can put a banjo. Oh, can I make imagine the, banjo, the possibilities. Can I make imagine the banjo if there bigger? was a hard hat. <laughs> Precisely what I was thinking. Yeah, imagine if there was a other, cucumber. Any other images? We got banjos aplenty. <laughs> <I don't laughs> Very topical. I'm not streaming this. <laughs> I don't know how... That's what <laughs> oh, so everybody thinks we're crazy. Um, we have a telestrator that is not currently uh, well, no, showing. It's, okay, up so it is. You, if you go to number three feed, you can see her back there putting banjos everywhere. But I'm not going to stream that on the main one. <laughs> Clear screen. Okay. Front row, do you have time for a question? I know yeah. you're very busy up there. Uh, yeah. All right. Is there any simulation training available for uh, piloting ROVs? Probably. I think some of the big industry stuff does that. We do not. Um, oh, boy. What is happening with that screen? Um, oh, that looks totally different on the big screen. Yeah, look. It doesn't, like... So that, that bell and that circle are supposed to be connected like it's pointing to something. Oh, so yeah. It, yeah. It is not working. 
because I know that, uh, what are they called, uh, race car drivers that are very, very high-tech race car simulators, but... Yeah, there are ones for ROVs. I've just heard they're also pretty useless. Oh, why is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we get to know. We just hear that they're pretty useless. They're pretty useless. All right. Yeah, I've never tried done one, and I don't know anyone that's done one, but I know that they exist. Sorry? Oh, I was uh, chatting with Aaron there. Oh, um, the question was, uh, how did we how did we get the Argus camera? How did we fix it? Well, we just uh, put a cable in a different spot. There's a problem with one of the connections between the camera and the way it gets sent up the cable. So we just put a different cable in, is nice. a long story short. Actually, uh, some people in the chat earlier were kind of loving the uh, old school grainy vibe. Were they, did they record it on their VCR? They're the <laughs> only ones. <laughs> oh, guys, what is our favorite thing about the Blue Water Watch? When it's over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone woke up and chose violence today. <laughs> I'm joking. I mean, when we see the ground. <laughs> also, when it's over, just said differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is a vibe of, like, anticipation. Like, you never know. When, like, a giant squid's going to come by. Yeah, I'm still on the giant squid. It's going to happen someday. You could have, like, a squid, like, ink so much that you think you're seeing the bottom, that the bottom's not actually there, but everybody panics. That, that could happen. <laughs> That's a thing that could happen. Could happen. Oh, my. Anything's possible. Especially if, like, the altimeter reads it as a bottom, but it's not. Love that one, yeah. Yeah, I really, I really hope Connor joins us again. Yes, Is it Connor. Connor. Uh, no, it's uh, Colton. 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 Colton he, was. He's like, two years old. Yeah, and he came back, and he was super excited, and he was really upset that our dive was ending, and he wanted to know if we have like a stream every day. Unfortunately, this is the last uh, dive of our, or not the last dive. This is the last expedition of the season, so we will be back in, I think, January. I'm guessing this is for the pilot, since we don't really have an adrenaline-heavy job back in the back row. Um, what is your pre-launch playlist to pump you up? Does it give you sci-fi spaceship launch vibes? <laughs> uh, whatever someone puts on on deck while we're doing pre-dives, I guess. Today Elton there was a combination John. of... What did Jess play? She had some punk rock, she had some... Uh, Italian music and Christmas carols kind of all yeah. melded I into do. a little that's, that's a good combo. It was a great combo, Strong yeah. Strong combo. Oh, there was ACDC thrown was, in there, yeah. too? It yeah. was pretty much full on ACDC when I was watching. It was, it was pretty good. I think it was only one song. It just goes on for about 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> that's like Meatloaf, too. Their songs just go on forever. Yeah. Yep. We should throw some of that in the mix. Meatloaf. I have a bunch on my phone. Perfect. <laughs> Next pre-dive, we'll get at it. Perfect. It's an adrenaline heavy. I don't think anything we do is really adrenaline heavy. I don't know. Sometimes we're like, oh, are you going to get that thing in the box? Uh. <laughs> it's more suspenseful for people watching. <laughs> I know. You guys remain calm under pressure. That's why you're so good at your jobs. I caught one. Meanwhile, we fish for squid with the, with the telestrator. <laughs> There's a lot of squids. Uh, because it's dark outside, uh, a lot of those squids have come close to the surface. They're very active right now, and we are seeing plenty. Uh, do we hire janitors? You have no experience or professional qualifications, but this is your dream. There are so many ways to get onto a ship. We absolutely have... Uh, uh, ships have uh, stewards and stewardesses who um, take care of some some of them do laundry we have to do our own laundry depends on the ship but they'll like you know change bedding um, clean up we have a chef that we would die without so yeah there's a bunch of ways to get on a ship i'm okay doing my own laundry yeah yeah same yep Ooh. speaking of which i need to do that uh, it's me yeah, tomorrow. Same. Actually, it's probably everybody's day tomorrow, so we're going to have a fight. Oh, I'm not doing laundry. I'll do it when I get home. Oh, uh, must be nice. <laughs> must, must be. Must be nice. Living the dream. I am. 
<laughs> dream of just going home, doing my own laundry. In like 10 minutes. Yep. My plan is to just shove everything into the bag and then dump it into the machine. I love it. Mm -hmm. No packing, just sort of shoving. You didn't even pack to get here. <laughs> I did pack. Did you? Yeah. I've been able to drive to the Nautilus a couple times too, and it's it is gourmet. It is very nice. Gourmet. <laughs> I mean, I have to make sure that I have all the things that I need at sea. So I definitely organize and like check things off the list so I don't forget something, like my little USB to Ethernet, which I totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered at the worst. Well, I will say it was the worst possible time. But it was awkward that my laptop doesn't have an Ethernet port. Yep. I had no idea. Like it, it never occurred to me that a laptop wouldn't have one, except unless it was like one of those thin Macs or something like. Yeah, they're too thin nowadays. Yeah, well, there's one. There's someone who has one on board. I can't remember who it is, but like it's a collapsed Ethernet thing, and you push it in, and it like ejects this Ethernet port. It's really cool. Is that uh, yours? What? Oh wow. Maybe it's Jess's. I don't know. I can't remember. That's neat. But it's too thin for the anyway. It's super neat. Um, how do people learn how to pilot Herc? Uh, by hitting a lot of things. <laughs> so that's how I learned anyway. <laughs> how do you learn to pilot Herc without damaging Herc? It's pretty robust. You, you'd be surprised. <laughs> we got rubber on all the all the baby buggy bumper spots that take impact. No, honestly, like that's learned on the job. Um, you come on, whether through internship or through contracting, and then that's usually based on either keenness to learn or existing skill sets, or both, but not a re or being able to pilot an ROV is not a requirement. Hold the phone. I thought that, um, well, you need some kind of engineering, something, or mechanical, or technical, or computer science, something background. Or biology. Or, okay. Josh Chernov, the ROV operations manager for Ocean Exploration Trust, is a professional biologist. So how did, you, like, you know, if I... If I am someone who has no uh, real um, technical background, just like signs an application like, hi, I really like ROVs. Can you teach me how to do one? How to make, nope, how to fly one. I'll say, yeah, sure, welcome aboard, basically. Yeah, well, you got to apply to the internship program. For the internship, okay. That's probably your best bet. The only non-interns that join our team are existing ROV contractors. Got it. Um, that come on board for to fill spots. But yeah, someone coming in with limited to no ROV experience generally comes in through the internship program. Yep, and we have intern positions for uh, several different positions. Let me look it up real quick, because I always, it's like naming the seven dwarves. I always forget at least it's one of them. ROV, navigation and mapping, yep. video, and science. Just that, I feel like there's uh, data. Data logging. Oh, yeah. I forgot they do have those. See? I, don't, I didn't dwarfs. think they had data, but... That's what it says. Seafloor mapping, ROV pilots, video, oh. data logger. Yep. Yeah, there you oh, go. Actually, yeah, there's no science. I think because as a science... Oh, the yeah. science is the data logger. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, how many different languages, spoke, languages are spoken on Nautilus? Depends on what crew is here at what time. I know we've got at least Spanish... Something Slavic. I don't know. Ukrainian. Is it Ukrainian? Okay. There's Russian. Oh, see, now we're gonna fight. Could be <laughs> Polish. Probably both. Probably both. All, all of There's the above. There's quite a few people who speak Spanish. Yeah. I don't even problem those Irish. That's a good question. Uh, glad you like the live stream have we come across any sunken large objects ever yes and often on purpose <laughs> sometimes we'll uh, have expeditions purposely looking for uh, sunken ships and other sunken things say sudden sudden large objects sunken Sun, sunken sunken. large objects sunken i have never pronounced it that way but that I, is how it's that's spelled. neat yeah sunken <laughs> sunken large objects the pen work Nice. Yep, confirmed. Test systems. <laughs> the M&M systems are down. <laughs> I 
Oh. Do you guys say G's Louise or G's Lewis? What? Louise. Definitely Lewis. There's no option there. <laughs> no, I say, I say G's Lewis, yeah. G's Lewis? I mean, as a joke, because that's clearly not ever G's <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> It's actually Gies. <laughs> Gies Lewis. Gies Lewis. <laughs> Make sure you say that all the time. <laughs> Where did that even come from? <laughs> I was just thinking about it earlier today. Okay. Um, there was a, a kid in one of the interactions today. What did he keep saying? Oh, he kept saying, uh, was it golly? It was in the chat. It was like golly or gosh or something like that. I was like, oh, I didn't know children are using that still. That's awesome. Children use golly and gosh. I have never used golly, I think, in, in a sentence before. Oh, oh I, my well, golly. I have said golly gosh, but like sarcastically. <laughs> golly gosh, isn't that strange? I don't even know how you use it in a sentence. You know what's a neat slang? Golly, that's Is weird. the word cool. Yes. <laughs> it's been like, what, five generations of people saying the word cool? I know. It's yeah. the only thing I could think of that has lasted that long. As slang. Grad's been around for pretty. It's pretty cool. For a little bit. It's pretty, yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, what is your favorite unplanned discovery? Uh, last night, um, the uh, acorn worm, I think, was my favorite because uh, we were off watch, having the screens up behind us, and uh, our watch leader, Megan, saw the, the creature on and ran up the stairs and magically teleported all the way up here, like instantly, flew. so that we could take a sample. She flew. She flew like an ROV. Yeah, she flew 30 miles mm -hmm. per minute. It was <laughs> crazy. I just, it was so cool, you guys. <laughs> I just really, I really liked that animal, and but, I had been yeah. wanting to collect one, because none had ever been collected from the Pacific, mm -hmm. and it's a known animal in the Atlantic, but we didn't know if it was the same thing or not. So we're, we have a sample now. We can compare that material and the material collected from the Atlantic and confirm the identification. That way I can remove the question marks and the CFs <laughs> from our identification guide. Yay. Also Yay. the, uh, the Something spoon worm. Will be, yeah. The spoon worm was also wild. This, yeah, the spoon worm was really wild. It took me a little while to figure out what was going on with the spoon <laughs> worm. I was like... The swipey bits. Oh, because you saw... The, the proboscis, the spoon part of the spoon worm, and I just couldn't figure out what kind of animal it was. I mean, I knew what it wasn't, but I couldn't figure out what it was. And then there was this long line that was going across the screen, and I was like, well, wait, what's going on here? And then it started retracting, and we're all like, whoa, mind blown. And it goes into the hole, and I'm like, oh, I got That's it. That's what the mystery hole the mystery is. The mystery lumps. And, and the like, it just bits. solved all of our problems. Like, all of the questions that we had regarding these, like, little mounds of sediment. And I was like, oh, well, sometimes animals make these burrows. I didn't think anything of it. And, and there the animal is, doing the burrow thing. <laughs> doing the burrow thing. That's pretty great. Yeah, that was cool. And what's the weirdest thing? I mean, that was pretty weird. Was really if we're weird. talking yeah, about this expedition, like I would say, yesterday was the weirdest, the weird stuff day. Yeah, we had a lot of good weird stuff. There's some like uh, I was going through the photos. There were some like trails of like shimmery golden tr bits. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. I'm not a geologist or or a biologist. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, they saw an octopus. They did. What? They saw a jumbo octopus. Yeah. I know. I was Wait, outraged as who? well. What watch? Uh, it the was last the, watch. Yeah, it was like the end as they were coming up. They saw what? a dumbo. Oh, man. I know. Jeez, Lewis, I missed it. Nope. I shouldn't have taken a nap. Not Sorry, catching geez, on. Sorry, Lewis. <laughs> messed up. I was disappointed. So we did have an Octopus Friday event, and I missed it. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. So maybe we'll have Octopus Friday on Saturday. <laughs> but it's still Friday for now, so. It's like Meatloaf Monday on a Tuesday. That's <laughs> when, that's tacos. That's when tacos happen. Yeah. You I it. really could go for a taco Tuesday. Yeah. We haven't had tacos on the ship. I don't think they make tacos. I think they made something like nachos like once. I was like, ah, I'll there pass. There was chips and guacamole. I heard that um, they used to not serve the chips with the guacamole. 
So this a was a big step for us, this chips and guacamole yeah. thing. I don't <laughs> know if you guys would, You would either get guacamole or <laughs> chips, but you're not at the same time. <laughs> Aww. No, it's, I, it would happen rarely, but this year it's been very consistent. Um, Lindsay feels event. like that was his one accomplishment at OET, was getting them to do chips and guac at the same time. <laughs> that's a big, big step. Amazing. It was a big step. Brings me a lot of joy when that comes out. That's all I eat. Thank you, Lindsay. Oh, was that who we have to thank for that historic occasion? Yeah. He told me the story about it. I was like, oh, good. It's good to know. My life has like some sta stability now that there's chips and guacamole at the same time. Well, I have to keep a record of our history because, you know, if we don't know what happened in the past, how can we keep ourselves from repeating it in the future? Yeah. So an ROV question. Uh, how okay. are the motors on Herc's thrusters sealed? How are they sealed? Uh, I am reading the question. The seals would need to withstand some pretty intense pressures. Are they magnetically coupled? That's a great question. They're not magnetically coupled, although that is a very common thruster design, especially on smaller ROVs. They are sealed with a dynamic seal. Um, there's two dynamic seals per thruster, and the shaft comes out of the motor housing, uh, one part of the dynamic seal is rotating with the shaft and the other one is static attached to the motor body and those two sealing faces rub on each other at exactly the same rotational rate of the thruster shaft itself so there's all sorts of different ways you can do that generally they generally they involve brass or bronze or uh, ceramic or graphite um, the only ones I've actually taken apart are the external seals, which are ceramic and graphite. And there's some internal ones, which I think are bronze and something, but I don't know. Nice. Anyway, good question. Yeah, awesome. Um, did we figure out what the swipey swipes? Yeah, we figured. We were just talking about the swipey swipes. It was made by an acorn worm. So the mounds, the random hole, and the swipey bits were all the same phenomenon. The spoon worm. They, Sorry. The acorn the spoon worm. The The acorn worm was the Yoda. Oh, yeah, the Yoda. Ugh. And it makes sort of a spiral trail. The acorn worm? Yeah, for some reason they like to like leave their um, droppings in a spiral. Uh, oh, uh, I'm not going to fact check this. I'm just going to read it. Greg Rouse from Scripps. Uh, Scripps collected a couple of acorn worms from the California borderlands earlier this year aboard Falcor. I believe one even had eggs. Wow. Oh, okay. Was it the white one? If it was the white one, um, that's not the one we collected. We collected the one that was purple. Yeah, the purple-headed one. Also, California coast and mid-Pacific usually have uh, different animals, so it's still a good record. Yeah. Even if uh, this one was collected, it would be a range extension. Um, students about to graduate with a degree in environmental biology. How does one get into a job like this? Well, you got to be a little more specific because in this control <laughs> van, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different jobs, I think. Seven? Well, seven different people, but two of them are both ROV pilots. Two but different two jobs. Different, yeah. Okay, fine. Seven different jobs. <laughs> so it depends on which job you're looking to get into. I mean, technically, Aaron, navigation's Aaron. Don't you have, like, five different jobs, <laughs> technically, <laughs> on the ship? So. Yeah. We have 15 different jobs <laughs> represented here. Yeah, maybe. No, not 15, but it doesn't stop three. to count. It just it hurts. No sleep for navs. <laughs> uh, how long does the descent take from surface level? Depends on how far we're going. 30 meters a minute. Yeah, we can do the math. Oh, Exercise I guess I for do viewers at home. Hang on, I'll do the math. It's just No, over let two the hours. viewers do the math. And it's then like say, hours. and then type in the chat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, type in the chat. What it is. And then <laughs> yeah. if you get it right, we'll shout you out. And if you get it wrong, we'll, we'll shame you. We'll shout you out. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, no shame. Did you, did no you shame. just say we'll shame you? <laughs> so we are going to. 
3,731 meters at a, oh, this feels like a test question, at a depth of 30 meters per minute. How many minutes will it take us? Bonus points if you convert the minutes into hours. I like the bonus. <laughs> bonus points if you can turn the minutes into nope. years. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. That's what blue water does. <laughs> Uh, oh, the purple acorn worm looked identical to the one that we collected. One broke up like ours did. But the other one might have come up intact or more or less intact. Okay, that's good to know. Um, that yeah. was this year, so it wasn't like in a repository yeah. and widely spread, so it's not something I was made aware of. It's really hard to follow every single dive all the time. I know there's some people who, who seem to. Who seem to. Yeah. Um, I usually am focusing on past dives and getting all that data ready to go to our databases. So I might be a little behind the times. Megan, you don't know about every single thing that's happening in the ocean? You don't know every acorn <sighs> worm that's been collected on Earth? That's, I'm sad. I'm sorry. I let you guys down. It's okay. You know every single species of coral <laughs> and made it suffer it. I'm, wor that's I'm working on job. expanding my, my knowledge every day. <laughs> So it's always good to learn something new. Um, do we like to use octopus as a catch-all for both singular and multiple octopus? Octopi is silly and unnatural. It's not octopi, actually. It's octopuses. So it's octopuses or octopodes because... Podes? It, yes, it would be octopi or octopi if it was, was, if it if was, it was Latin, Latin, but, but it's, it's Greek. Greek. Exactly. I remember this. I remember octopodes. This. It's the same thing with platypuses. Yep. It's not platypi. But it's I think if you say seeds. octopodes, octopodes, you're probably a nerd. Yes, <laughs> and you should spell it with a K for authenticity. <laughs> Octopoda. Octopodes, and I am a nerd. Are they serrate or yeah, the inserate octopods? Oh, no. <laughs> Do they have the biology. ears or no ears? Did they hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? <laughs> Thankfully, Aaron is, does not have the camera on us because we are doing the dance. <laughs> yeah. Nope, don't even no, try no, it. She's We're gonna, done no, now. she's going to put it on. Did you just challenge me? No. I just going to catch her. Uh, no, we're on this camera. What is that? I was just wondering. I looked over and it scared me. It's the 360 cam. Oh. Okay. We should reach. Seven, uh, 3,731 meters in about 94 minutes from now, assuming the current depth is roughly 900 meters. Uh, oh, I didn't even look. Okay. Good. I didn't, <laughs> Good work. I yeah, didn't that's do approximately uh, uh, one point five hours. Paused. It still says we're at 100 meters. Well, yeah, oh, I was okay. just going from the surface. So bonus points from calculating from where we actually are. <laughs> yeah, that was smart. <laughs> No, we don't but have you to do didn't that. convert it to hours. Yeah, yeah, they did 1.5 hours. Oh, okay, yeah. never mind. Now, now, what time will it be okay, for I us? Okay, I guess you got all the there? points. <laughs> bedtime. What time? Will, yeah, It'll and unfortunately, we just have, I don't know if it's unfortunate. We have an hour of blue water before the next uh, watch takes over. So our time is just about up, folks. Now, we've got about a half an hour. Oh, uh, which side of the mountain will we traverse? Oh, that's a that's a navigation's errand question, I think. Or no, oh, we we have that, don't we? Yeah, we have it. Oh, you guys have it on high pack. I have to zoom out though, so you could see. Otherwise, it's just a ship in a blue sea. If you look at the quad, it's on satellite V three, yeah. which is in the bottom left corner. Also, the dive map is this oriented north south, so we'd be going south, right? South side. Yeah, south we side. We are on the south side. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, all of you budding cartographers out there, you don't actually have to put north at the top. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> you just have to mark it. No. Turn I it disagree. <laughs> if you're doing it for navigation, please put north at the top. If you're doing it for decoration, do whatever you want. But but mark where north is, please. Art is freedom. No, no there's art has rules. Don't what? let anybody make you think art doesn't have rules. Maps art have has rules. Art does not have rules. Art has so many rules. Art has guidelines. Ooh. And Loose guidelines. Totally. Rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> yes, that's why you eat the magnets. Wow. <laughs> oh no. For art? For art? Ooh. Um. 
I can see that argument being made. Yeah, people do weird stuff yep. for art, and uh, yes, okay. Don't eat magnets. Does don't everyone magnets remember art. that? Um, she's like a performance artist, and no. she does crazy stuff. Because like, she's a performance artist, you don't even have to tell us what it is. You've already told <laughs> us the whole story. I actually saw her when I was in New York. Um, it was interesting. She just sat there. Uh huh. She was like oh, sitting yeah. there for like a whole week. Do you yep. guys remember this? And people would no. like come and just like sit across from her, and that was it. Yep. And there was a lady that like just had a bunch of uh, instruments out, and you could just like do whatever you wanted to her, like you know, cut her hair. That that was her. Do, that yeah. was her. She did that. Yeah, she was the yeah. same artist. Oh my gosh, what was her name? I don't remember. She has a, she has a bunch of like other kind of cool art. There's like a whole exhibit about um, like pictures and like videos of like her previous stuff and like experimental. And Megan work. were just talking about art history, so I minored in. I minored in a bunch of stuff, but I minored in art history for one. Um, and I kn I'm an artist. I know all the art stuff, but do I use it on a daily basis? No. So <laughs> if you ask me to dig down in the archives, it's gonna have, it's gonna, it's gonna take me a minute. Uh, Five thousand six hundred and forty seconds. Okay, Maria Marina Abramovic. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. That was from Coralie, right? Huh? You, who said that? What? What did I, I say? say that name. M uh, me, yes. Okay. I was looking at Aaron, and I thought Aaron was talking, and I was like, oh, is that from the chat? I don't see anything in the chat. Nope, that wasn't me. Hi, Coralie. Wait, what? Don't be confused. It's okay. I'm so confused. <laughs> Marina Abramovich is the artist that I'm talking about, though. That sounds right. Um, what was for dinner? Um, I have food allergies, and so I <laughs> have to eat. <laughs> I have to eat like the special meats. <laughs> they have like special meats in this like little container that like is kind of hidden. They put like this like secret like foil on top of it. And, yeah. So I had and it's like plain plain chicken and like plain. I had rice and salmon and furikake. Do they put like seasonings on it or just salt? Do they Actually, put pepper? No, just okay. salt and like I will put some se like the seasonings that I know what it is. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's pretty tasty. Like it, it's not yeah. bad. Oh, what did I just say? What is your favorite art? Favorite art historical period? I just said I gotta. It's gonna take me a second to. Well, I do like Flemish. I like Flemish painting because I like the like over like overt need for everything to have a symbolic meaning. Um, so I also like the like plates of like Jan van Eyck. Uh, same period. Aww. Do you like tapestries? Tapestries are red. I make tap. Well, okay. I am able to make tapestries. That's cool. They take a really, really long time. I'm a weaver. I'm sure. I'm a weaver, and so it, they take forever. So I never, if I invest in one, I will have to use like five thousand. Like it will be the most tapestry. Nice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's deep sea tapestry, tapestry. go. Uh, deep sea tapestry would be awesome. It would be <gasps> so awesome. Sorry, can, so can I interrupt for a second? Yes, I have a, I have a mapping question. Yes. Um. So, Erin, can you tell me what the dive plan is? What? Where are we gonna go? Uh, sure. I yeah. was just looking at this. Yeah. Why don't we? Yeah, I could do that. Um. We are on the south side of the seamount. Uh, let me turn off all of this nonsense. It's not nonsense. Otherwise known as we need uh, that contour lines. I love contour lines. I do too, but they're quite uh, noisy when you zoom out because yeah. they're 10 meters. Yeah. Go with 50. All right, so zooming back out. We are starting in this this kind of valley um, between two ridges on the south side of Seamount B, which is the actual Chautauqua Seamount, I believe. Like the only one with a name. Pretty sure. Um, anyway, so ship's down there. We're down there, we're coming down, not at the base. The base of these seamounts has been beyond um, Herc's depth. They've been around 4,800. It's been about the, the base of most of them. Um, so we're starting up slope a little bit, uh, right in there in a pretty benign area. And then we're marching our way up. Um, this is the first one where we haven't started directly on a ridge, so that's interesting. Um, we're going up a little bit in the trough and then up onto the ridge, so we'll be getting nice steep stuff up there. Not us, somebody. And then marching along the ridge. 
like a little plateau in there and then up to the summit who makes the points who makes the points um usually it's it depends on the expedition um in this case um adam is quite good at, at making dive plans so he uh and he's really confident with all of our software so we just set up the the bathymetry form and he comes and makes a nice uh nice profile of the dive he wants um last cruise uh chris kelly did them and he was a very simple dive planner he would just give a start and an end um and sometimes i've been on dives where the the navs or the mapping coordinator will sit there with the chief science and help them and the expedition leader and help them plan it out so it really depends on on the crews and the goals was was this seamount completely unmapped before we got here or was this one that had been mapped before this one had this been mapped one, this yeah this whole been area before. has been pretty well mapped with the extension of like there's been a few little gaps yeah um but this one was pretty well it's a really pretty map yeah it is pretty i really like this one yeah. i like the colors would you like to talk about the colors Aaron? <laughs> the colors yeah uh, yeah, so this is Perula color map. This is our our new fave. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Perula. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of Perula. I really like too. it. Um, I like it way more than colors in Terp, so I'm happy to keep using it. <laughs> um, but it is the MATLAB default color map, and that this was also Adam Adam Sewell had this um, in a format that we could use in our software. Um, I saw him. I've known Adam for uh, quite a long time. He was the second client I went to visit when I worked uh, for a software company. Um, and I've seen him present multiple times. And last time he presented at UNH, um, he had some really beautiful color maps. And I asked him for his color maps, and this was one of them. So he he takes a lot of care when he makes his imagery for, for things. And I like that. It's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Anytime. I was staring at the map in sat feed three because it's in front of me. And I was like, wonder where we're going. Yeah, marching. And so we, um, it was interesting when he came in to do this dive plan, he wanted to see all the other dives because we're trying to hit all the orientations, right? So sometimes we've come up the west, sometimes the east. So getting through this, this seamount chain, making all sure that we're also trying different orientations, which we kind of did on the last expedition as well, if you remember with Chris. Yeah, um, moving, moving around. Yeah, he wanted to make sure, you know, we were seeing at least different perspectives on the different seamounts. That's really cool. But I'm still, my still goal before I get off the ship is make a nice big scene with like everything since we got to Hawaii, all the dives and stuff and just kind of yeah. fly through it. Like that would be, be really cool. cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Gonna, gonna work on that. I'm just gonna leave that up on sat feed three for a while. Okay. I like yeah, it. please do. It's pretty. It is. I also like that we get to see this. This is like a smart idea. Thanks for bringing this up, Aaron and Aaron. <laughs> it's nice to have an overview before you dive into something. No pun intended. It is. <laughs> it, it is. Was, it was intended. Yeah. It's nice to have the power of the Aaron's combined. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we do try to have the like 3D map ready too, but a little behind today. Too many things going on. The infamous Subnautica comment. I'm probably the biggest gamer in the van, and I don't game a whole bunch these days. I've not played Subnautica. We're kind of playing real-life Subnautica right now. <laughs> but uh, I do want to play Abzu uh, from That Game Company. I'm a big That Game Company fan. Uh, hello, fellow weaver. Uh, 24 inch heddle, heddle loom. You can do a lot on a, a rigid heddle loom. So, like a lot of color and uh, like color play. Pro probably do a shadow weave, I'm guessing. I don't know. I did like some insane, monstrous uh, finger weaving project that I like no human being should ever take. It was like double weave, too. Like, yeah. So, you can do anything on just like a very simple frame loom. Go have fun. I made a scarf once. Nice. You're making a scarf right now. Oh, you mean uh, weaving? Yeah, weaving. Uh, what kind of loom? Um, like, you uh, don't have to get technical, but, like, is it, like, 
It's it like was, the one where you like lift up. Yeah, it's the one you lift up and push it. I don't know. It was, it, probably, it was a Girl Scout project. It was really fun. I'm guessing it was a rigid head on limb because uh, like you take the thing out of the thing and then you push, yeah, yeah. yeah, you take it out and then you push it. Yeah, super fun. Mm -hmm. I had a fun time doing it. I think I still have that scarf somewhere. Nice. Not here in Hawaii because I can't think of a reason why I'd need a scarf unless I was inside. Um, what was that artist? She makes climate change scarves. Let's see. Or fabric, at least. I know. Oh, is this it? Knit for climate action? Is that what? Let me see. It's really cool because it has like, it's like a, a line. Every line is a, uh, represents like the average temperature in a specific spot. And like at the very end, it just gets like red, red, red. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Oh, that's cool. I've yeah. seen people make blankets like that, where yeah. every day of the year corresponds to a different like color temperature. So this wasn't the one I was looking for, but yeah, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. So like, it, you record all the temperatures for the year, and then if the temperature falls within a certain range, you use a certain color, and you just make a row for each day of the year, and it makes a whole blanket. Yeah. It's really pretty. Yeah, I Unless can't. you live in a place that has the same temperature all year round, in which case it might just be one color, <laughs> like Hawaii. <laughs> it You're, was a very specific uh, artist. But if you did rainfall, there. that that could be a good other thing you could do. Yeah, ours would be super random, and like halfway through the day it would rain, and then be super hot later. <laughs> yeah, but that could be a really fun like pattern. Like half half the line. That would get really technical. That could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a girl um, who I go to school with, and uh, she made a 5.31 million year record of benthic oxygen isotopes in a blanket form. Whoa. Yeah. And each row of a blanket covers 15,000 years with the color representing oxygen isotopes measured from shells preserved in sediments at the bottom of the ocean. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Her name is Isabel Dove. If you guys wanna, I think it's ID Knits on Instagram. If you wanna check out her paleo blanket. Well, ding dong dang. I thought there was a specific. Per I mean, it looks like several people have done the climate change things. But there was one specific person I was looking for. Oh, we've got a crocheter, we've got a knitter. Oh, a deep yeah, sea. Yeah, I do. I'll send it to you. A deep sea inspired. Uh, <laughs> exactly, right? Coral and zoanthid <laughs> and red orange brittle stars. That Especially would be a super if they nice make that palette. adorable fish. What's up? You're on XPL. I know. Uh, I just said, what's up? <laughs> oh, I was talking about, I, I want one of those deep sea fish. Yeah. Uh, little crocheted deep sea fish. Okay, I can work on that for you. <gasps> I know. When's your Wait, Etsy are you shop serious? Let's an Etsy shop. Please My, do. I'll, I'll, I'll make a, like, a little chana cops. That's what I want. I want a little <gasps> yes. chana cops. If you, Everybody Those are so cute. Chana. You have to make those. <laughs> okay. I, I will buy one from you. Yeah. Thanks. All right. I'll give you my address. Uh, oh, this person wants to learn to weave and make a scarf of stripes that has color tones mapped to the digits of pi. That would be super cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it could be as long as you want it to. <laughs> yeah, forever. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's like, that's brilliant. <laughs> it's sold in like multiple sizes. Genius. This relates to the ocean because it's math. Now we got an Absu pen. Yeah, uh, it seems like relaxing. Uh, when I get home next week, I will be playing Katamari. Na 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 na. 
<laughs> to be honest, every time I look out, so when our view from you know the ship, we've never been to a place where you can't see any land. It's just this big. I can. It's like a big flat blue disc. And if you've ever played Katamari, and uh, number one anyway, and you make the moon, all you're left with is a big flat blue disc. So it just makes me think about that every time I, uh, I uh, look out. Although you can see artistic. You can see that uh, at the very edge there's a little darkness so that means that the earth is curving. So we're just seeing the horizon. It does curve around and form a nice big sphere. So this is a rare occasion for Team Blue Water, but um, we only started an, uh, with an hour into our watch left to go. So we're actually going to be doing watch change um, for the next couple minutes. So um, we will be a little on the quiet side while we shift over. <laughs> 